스탠포드 뇌과학교수 앤드류 후버만이 도파민 활용을 통한 목표 달성에 관해 이야기합니다. About goals and goal pursuit would be incomplete without a discussion about the molecule dopamine. Dopamine is often thought of as the molecule of pleasure and reward, but actually it is the molecule of motivation. This is best illustrated by a classic set of studies that have been carried out in both animals and in humans. Two rats, each in a separate cage. You can provide those rats with the opportunity to indulge in something that they like. Rats will very readily approach the rewarding thing. They will mate, they will eat, they will pursue something that is of pleasure. Now, if you are to take one of those rats and deplete its dopamine neurons, you can eliminate its dopamine neurons or block dopamine in the brain. What you find is that those animals will still enjoy pleasure. They will consume the food, they will mate, etc. However, their motivation to achieve pleasure is vastly reduced. In fact, if you place the item of pleasure, the mate, the food, etc., even just one rat's length away from that rat, the rat without dopamine will not even move one length of its own body in order to achieve that pleasure. And there are naturally occurring experiments in humans that mimic that result very accurately. The depletion of dopamine does not inhibit an ability to experience pleasure necessarily. It inhibits an ability to pursue or go through the series of action steps in order to achieve pleasure. So dopamine really sits at the heart of our motivational state to seek out goals and to seek pleasure. And this is true for immediate goals that take place within a time frame of minutes or a time frame of a day or the time frame of a week or the time frame of a lifetime. Dopamine is the common currency by which we pursue goals. There's a fundamental feature of how our brain releases and uses dopamine that's called reward prediction error. Dopamine is released in the greatest amount and places us into a greater state of motivation when something happens that's positive and novel. Now, an important thing to understand about dopamine is that it's not always released on the same schedule. There are a couple different ways that dopamine is released and when it is released relative to your anticipation of a reward is key. If you don't expect something positive to happen, you're just going about your day and something positive happens, dopamine and a lot of dopamine is released. If we anticipate something positive is going to happen and then that thing happens, we experience dopamine as part of the anticipation. So even before we get the reward, there's an increase in dopamine. And then when we actually experience the reward, we experience the positive thing, there's a smaller increase in dopamine. Okay, so again, the biggest increases in dopamine are response to things that are positive and unexpected. Lesser dopamine is released when we anticipate something good will happen. But then if that thing doesn't happen, for instance, our friends don't show up for dinner, then there's a drop in dopamine below our initial baseline. That drop in dopamine is the chemical essence of what we call disappointment. Now, this dopamine reward prediction error, as it's called, can be leveraged toward trying to reach our goals because it tells us where we should set our milestones. We can't be in a mode of simply being focused on the finish line. Very few people can do that over long periods of time in a way that's effective. So then the question becomes how often or at what intervals should one assess progress? And it turns out this is very subjective, but that there's a way to make it objective. Our subjective understanding of why we are doing something is fundamentally important for the effects that we will get from that behavior and indeed the effects that that behavior will have on us. The reward schedule, the dopamine system is highly susceptible to the subjective effects, the so-called top-down effects of when we decide that something is going to be good for us. If we analyze it on a given time frame, well then it's going to be good for us. So this has two major implications. First of all, in terms of reward schedules, we can decide to use any reward schedule that we want for a given behavior. So what I suggest people do is pick a particular interval at which they are going to assess progress. And if you've been making regular progress towards a goal, that you reward yourself. And the reward indeed is all cognitive. It's all mental. It's telling yourself, yes, I'm on the right track. Now, some people will say, wait, but I want to know exactly how often I should do that. 
you need to do that at an interval that you can maintain consistently. For that reason, I think that daily or ideally weekly assessments are going to be best. I think that checking in at the end of a week, looking back on the previous week and assessing how well you performed in pursuit of a given goal, how many times a week you ran or how many times you studied or how many times you did something that you wanted to do or avoided something that you didn't want to do. Pick a milestone that you can maintain consistently throughout the pursuit of a goal. The second thing is that the subjective effect is absolutely essential for all aspects of goal-seeking behavior. We cannot underestimate the extent to which the dopamine system and our sense of whether or not we are on the right track is under our cognitive control. If we constantly place ourselves into a mode of thinking that we are failing, well, then indeed, we are not going to churn out much dopamine. Now, earlier I said we need to predict and visualize failure. But that is not the same thing as thinking about ourselves as failing. We need to predict what the outcome would be if we failed, but then encountering that and in behaving in a certain way and thinking in a certain way and pursuing our goals in an effective way, maybe checking in on that each week, we definitely need to reward ourselves cognitively for the correct and successful pursuit. What this means is that anticipate and think about failure as a mechanism of generating motivation and indeed fear and anxiety so that you lean into the correct behaviors and you lean away from the incorrect behaviors to reach your goal. You absolutely want to reward yourself cognitively by telling yourself, I'm on the right track. I got another week where I accomplished whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. A concrete example that I'm following now is this 150 to 200 minutes of zone to cardio per week. So once a week, I'll check in with myself. If I reach that 150 to 200 minute threshold, then I'll reward myself simply by checking off a box and saying, okay, I'm on track. I'm on track. I'm on track. This dopamine system is critical to re-up, to remind ourselves that we are on track if indeed we are on track because dopamine itself provides a state of motivation and readiness to continue in the regular pursuit of our goals. Dopamine, the molecule, is actually used to manufacture epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are other molecules in our brain and body, which put us into that readiness and action state. They are actually the molecules that help generate that increase in systolic blood pressure that put us, puts us into a state of readiness. So you can think about dopamine as a self-amplifying system, provided that you are leveraging the dopamine system on a consistent schedule. Now, by also following a consistent schedule of self-reward, you set yourself up for any positive, unanticipated rewards that may happen. So for instance, if you're checking in with yourself weekly, telling yourself that you're doing well, if indeed you are, and then for instance, you're out on a run or you're doing something, I'm using fitness as an example, but you're doing something, you find yourself performing particularly well, that's a unexpected dopamine reward that will further amplify the system.